Hiya, welcome to today's Facebook Live video. I'm Paul's Kitchen, I'm hosting this with Swan. Give us a little like if you haven't already done that. And today is a National Fajita Day. So we're going to do loads of great recipes. We're going to do three different fajitas. We're going to do shrimp, steak and chicken. Most people will have chicken, but try a shrimp and try a steak, or even better, try a surf and turf one. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful guacamole a nice salsa called pico de gallo and I'm going to make our own fajita spice mix so come and have a look at this on camera today is my lovely wife Julie so when you give us a shout out where you're from any questions she will uh, answer them for you if it doesn't come up because sometimes Facebook's a bit funny we will answer everything afterwards but come back in here and have a look so here is my spices I've got some sweet smoked paprika some garlic I've got some chili some salt some oregano, sorry that's sugar, oregano, salt, I've got some ground coriander and some cumin that I've ground down. That's what it is. Most people buy a little packet of fajita spice and it's just never as good. So I urge you to get these spices. Now if you make enough, you can store it in an airtight container or an old jam jar, it'll last ages. So make a batch and it's really simple. It is as simple as this. All you do is mix it all together, right? And I guarantee this would be the best spice mix you've ever had on the fajita front. It's so much more fragrant and so much tastier than the one you buy in the shop. Now look at that. It's a different colour to the one you buy in the shops, isn't it? Yeah, the ones in the shop, they will keep out the most expensive spices and they'll use more of the cheaper spices, obviously, because they have to make a profit and they will use a lesser grade where that when you buy your own spices you can guarantee how old they are how fresh they are even better if you buy the uh, whole seed grind them down yourself they'll be even higher quality how do you grind them i use the pestle and mortar for the cumin so simple just put them in and if you really want to go to town you can toast them first and that will release some of the flavors a lot of people swear by toasting the whole spices first just to make them more fragrant. Okay. Okay, so very simple. First recipe done. How quick and easy is that? Look at that. That's fantastic. I'm going to leave that there. Okay, here we are. And here we're going to make our pico de gallo salsa and our guacamole first. So pico de gallo is a classic salsa but a little bit chunkier i prefer it than the really saucy um salsa you buy in a jar which is fine but it's not as flavorsome as this and all we need for this is very simply some red onion now i've told you before and i'm going to show you again when we cut a red onion keep the root on keeps it all held together and when we slice we're going to slice to the root but not through it i'm going to slice very finely now you see how I'm keeping it all held together and you see how it's not cut all the way through the root? Mm -hmm. Just keep doing that, nice and steady, nice and slowly. And then we'll put a couple of slices this way. And once again, I have not sliced all the way through and look how it's all together. Fantastic. And then we slice this way. And then we have or red onion. Could you use white onion? Could. You can use white onion, you could use shallot, you can use Spanish onion. I like the uh, flavour of red onion. I also love the colour against the tomato and against the jalapeno chilies. That's why I use it. So we'll put that in my bowl, like so. Remember guys, tell me where you're from. Or some of you have already been posting some pictures of your stuff you've been making. My sister-in-law in America, Jo, has showed me her batch of spice mix, Jo. So thank you for that. Let me know how your fajitas go. There we go. Right, now, two jalapenos. Now, these are not the hottest chilies, so you can go to town with these. If you just want to be safe and just try with one first, no problem. But remember, it's salsa. And we need to have a bit of heat going through that. And if you don't want 
to have a bit of heat, that's fine, just knock a bit out. So there's one chilli there. Just slice it. So you leave up. the seeds in? I'm leaving the seeds in just because we like it nice and hot in this, in this family. If you take the seeds and the pith out, that's where the heat is, the membrane around the seeds and pith. So take them out if you want it a little bit less hot. But I kind of don't see the point of that. Just put less chilli in because it's chilli at the end of the day. You want it hot. You're making salsa because you need a little spoonful of vibrancy when you're eating it. Just put a little bit less salsa in. It doesn't make sense to me making a lot of salsa that's bland. Make something powerful and just give it a little tickle. Spike and Harry from Barra Ford saying hello. Oh, yes, Spike and Harry. Are you watching them in the car? We've there got somebody go. from Spain. Ian's joined us from Spain and then lots of other people from uh, around the country. Oh, wonderful. So there we go. Look at that. It's finely diced of the chilli. That's going in there. That's just one. You see how much chilli I'm putting in, can't you? Yep. Remember, we want this to really sing. We want to give it some really great vibrance. And of course, look at these beautiful colours of the Mexican flag. The red, the green. Absolutely wonderful. A bit more. Seeds and all. That's wonderful. Get that in. Then I've got two washed, good quality tomatoes. Try to buy the vine tomatoes, they're the best. When you smell them, you can smell the difference. When they're on the vine, they have that wonderful sort of greenhouse smell. Do you know when, if you've ever smelled a tomato growing, you'll understand what I mean. Everybody used to grow tomatoes. So two tomatoes, all we're gonna do is cut the eye out there, you see that? Just nick that with a V cut, that little eye piece out like so. Show you again. Nick that out, because that's not the nicest part of the tomato. You don't need to peel them, you don't need to deseed them. We're not that posh here. We're just going to cut that through. And um, tomato wise, um, can you use all sorts of different tomatoes, the smaller ones? Yeah, you can use cherry tomatoes if you want, um, but just try to buy the best tomatoes you can. You can even use tin tomatoes if you haven't got any fresh tomatoes. All you do is drain the juice off. Um, I've worked with tin tomatoes as well. So you mean the chopped ones or yeah, the full ones? The chopped ones. The chopped ones. They're not quite as good. Um, I use tin tomatoes for when I'm cooking sauces, but for um, for salsa, so it is best to use fresh. So I'm going to get my two tomatoes in there. Mm, they look good. Nice. First one. Very fresh and vibrant. Once again, get that out. And then we'll slice it up again. So this salsa would be nice with them, um, sort of Doritos or something, wouldn't it? Great. You know, if you're making like a lot of nachos, something like that. Yeah. Also great um, as a salsa for some grilled fish, some grilled meat. It's really good. How long would it last for? Could you put it in a Tupperware and make it last? You know what? There's nothing much in this that will go off, so it's going to last a good three or four days, maybe five days if stored in the right conditions. Cool. I'm going to put a bit of coriander in there. Now look at that. Quite a bit of coriander. And look, I'm putting the stalks in as well, because the stalks are very delicious on coriander. That's it. So they say with some herbs, um, to tear them, don't they? Why, why is that? Um, is, it different? is it like basil and stuff? You know what, probably you tear things because to not bruise them, but that's probably because people have got blunt knives. If you've got a sharp knife, no problem. A little bit of olive oil, like so, and then, Juice of a lime. I'm going to show you a really good tip with limes. Now look at these limes. I bought the ones that are more yellow. Look at that. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. I don't go for the really green ones because they're not ready yet. Go for the ones that are soft. If they're soft, they're going to give lots of juice. If they're hard, they're not going to juice. You hear of all these people saying things like, oh yeah, best way to do it is put it in the microwave and roll it and all these hacks. The best hack, choose the soft limes when you're buying them. Choose the ones that have gone slightly yellow, they're the best ones. Look at all the juice, look at that. So a lot of lime juice in there. A bit of salt. And the last thing, I'm going to grate a crop of garlic. And there is our pico de gallo. Okay. 
And all I'm going to do is give that a mix. Now, when you see them colours come alive, look at that. Oh, that's lovely. Now, that's going to marinate for 15 20 minutes, and that's going to get even better. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. And believe it or not, the juice left, but here's a, now if you're looking for hacks, here's a real hack. The juice left in the bottom, if you strain that off, it is absolutely wonderful with a little touch of iced vodka, like a Bloody Mary. Shot of each, wonderful. We might even try that later as well. Okay, give myself a little clean down. There is my pico de gala ready. And I will move on now to my guacamole. So, guacamole, I've got one spring onion. I'm going to finely slice that. Like so. Use all the green as well, it's not just the white. The green gives great colour, great flavour. It's slightly more bitter than this sweeter white part, but it's very important to get that nice blend of flavours. There we go. The amount of time I see people cut all the green off and throw it in the bin, just trim the edges. You want to give that some salt. And then I've got some garlic going in there. Like so. And then I'm going to give one half of chilli. Don't want too much. This wants to have a blend and a balance. I'm going to chop this nice and finely. Go, look at that, seeds and all, a little bit of heat, love a guacamole. Now that goes in, I'll give it a bit of olive oil. I'm also going to give it juice of a lime. Go. Now I find it easier to do this now, instead of doing the avocado first. Because it's easier to mash the avocado into the liquid as opposed to having it mashed then adding the liquid. And then I, I like the guacamole when it's got chunks in it. And then if you keep mashing and mashing, obviously you're breaking it down, it's gonna to come too smooth. But if you like it smooth, a good, your good way is to put it in your blender, your jug blender if you wanna do that. And there is some bit of coriander. So, and then that goes in there. Now I says on the recipe this is for two people. It's actually probably more like four, but just because we love guacamole so much, we need an avocado person. So guacamole is not great for storing, is it? I mean, does it does it last? Do you think? Not ideally. It's one of them things that's best made fresh because avocado oxidizes so quickly. Um, if you let it open to the air and you don't have enough acidity in there, it will brown and it doesn't look very appetizing. Yeah. Now you look on that while I wash my hands, do you? Okay. Looks good, smells good. Okay, right. Yeah, any good hacks for avocados? Yes. First one, how to get rid of the stone. Yeah. Just give it a squeeze. Okay. People do this, take it out, which is now apparently the biggest form of hand injuries <laughs> in the UK now, avocado hand. Just squeeze it out, it's nice and simple. Then get not too sharp a knife and just cut the avocado like so in the skin. Okay. Yeah. See that? Watch, I'll show you again. If you use a sharp knife, it could go through. You can add to the, your uh, Statistics of avocado hand, which we don't want to do. So just is that just a normal knife? Just a normal knife, yeah. In that way. Have you got any um, any tips for avocados that are unripe? You know, the most annoying thing. Nothing. Not much. Leave it out. Let it ripen. But don't buy them. Buy the ready to eat ones. Um, sometimes you can ripen an avocado and then you look and it's gone black. You only see the one that is eat one now when ripen at home. The reason why um, 
they want to do that is people don't want to manufacturers want to sell you them where they don't have to do anything to them so that's why most avocados will be you ripen them they ripen them it takes a bit more technical ability you'll also find they're slightly more expensive but it's worth it you don't what's the worst thing buy an avocado and then it can't match horrible right now i've cut it like that i've just give the skin a squeeze and it almost it's almost mashed itself look yep do it again yeah so you're just squeezing that through yeah look at that okay that is amazing and really all i'm doing now is just bring that together with the back of the fork mashing any big lumps down like so if you have a, um, a potato masher that's sometimes good as well mm. but if you blend it it gets really smooth i've got nothing against blended quack but for me it's more like i like seeing it when it's more like a smashed avocado yeah and you can see now the colors are miles better now, this is something lovely to have, isn't it, on toast with poached eggs? Unbelievably. Probably the breakfast of choice for those who uh, like to be healthy, good gain, good for you. Slice of grilled sourdough, two poached eggs, smashed avocado. It's on every trendy cafe at the moment. Always great with a bit of cider bacon as well. But anyway, there we go. Have a little look at that. See how I'm just bringing it together? Yeah, that's good. But you see how there's still a few lumps in there? Yeah. For me, that's where it's at. Cool. Okay. Good, yeah. Two recipes down. Mm-hmm. They both look you great. You that while I clear my mess up? Yeah. Um, and then good. we're going to move on to the actual making of them. So. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is prepare my vegetables. So what we want to do is when we're doing anything complex like multi-ingredient dishes, Make things in advance. Make your salsa in advance. Make your guac in advance. Get your vegetables all cooked. Get your meat out and let it sit at room temperature. Don't try to do everything at once. Otherwise it turns into chaos. So here I've got a whole bunch of spring onions. All I'm going to do is take the beards off. I'm going to just cut them into threes. So you're keeping the dark green bits again? Absolutely. Using them. Yep. All I've done is trim them little bits. And I like to keep my spring onions quite big. Yeah. I like the quite chunky. I, I like the vegetables when they are chunky. I like it when they have a bit of texture, almost like a stir fry, as opposed to when they're really wilted. I want texture when I mean. It's really important. Everybody talks about flavour, seasoning, sourness, bitterness, saltiness. But texture crunch it really adds to the flavors of stuff okay peppers just top and tail all i'm going to do is just slice them up don't throw any of the top and tails away there's the pepper there mm -hmm. and then cut the pepper in half and carefully run your knife through your pepper and that will take out all the white see that i'll yep. show you again Oh yeah. Yeah, there's no wasted pepper whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then all we do with this is we cut them into thin slices, which is about the size of the bits of spring onion. There or thereabouts. So that's one whole pepper. And then we're gonna do a green one as well. A bit of that. And I love green pepper. It's really a real Mexican thing, that sort of more fresher flavour as opposed to a sweeter. You'll see the Mexicans use a lot of the sort of green chilies, green tomatoes. Okay, slice that up. And then there's my vegetables cut. Mm, I've got some lovely. lime, which I'm yep. going to squeeze in the pan yep. in a moment. But good. you focus on that while I give my board a little clean. Yeah. Mmm, looks good and smells really fresh. It's really good. Really fresh, really vibrant. Okay. 
There we go, a little bit of housekeeping done, nice and clean, show you how hygienic you are when you work. Right, and let's look at the real deal. So I couldn't work out what, what to do. And when I talked to all the guys at Swan, they were like, oh, we love chicken, we love steak, we love shrimp. So I thought, why not do it all? Because it's easy. You don't have to just have one flavor of chicken. So what I've got here is chicken, check this out. Chicken breasts, cut them in half so they're thin. I've got some beautiful king prawns here. Oh, lovely. Now these were in the shell. And if you look at the back of the king prawn, you see how there's like, I've been cut down there and you see that valley there, there was a, a black track there, which is the prawn's waist. I've made sure that was out. And if you go anywhere good, they will always take that out. So I would always urge you, cut the back of the prawn when it's raw, open it up and you'll see some black track there. It's its waist, why would you want to eat that? So make sure you properly peel the prawns and properly check that they took the vein out. Lovely, and then the steak. Just gonna switch my uh, contact grill on. A little look. So I've set it to chicken. Yep. And that's gonna warm up and that's where I'm gonna put the chicken on. Excellent. Right, let's have a look at my steak here. I've not gone for anything fancy. I've gone for what I believe a beautiful steak and it's used a lot in Mexico. It's skirt. Now it's cheap, but okay. it's always overlooked. People buy this and they turn it into braises and stews, but it's a delicious steak. What's important is, look at this. See all them layers of fat? Yeah. That's what you need. You want some nice marbling. Yeah. Freak your, freak your butcher out by saying, can I have some skirt? Can I have a piece that's got as much fat in as possible? You'll go right up in his estimations and he'll look after you like you know what you're talking about. So all I'm going to do with this steak is I'm just going to put a few cut marks where it's thicker, mm -hmm. both sides. That's going to make it cook more evenly. Okay. And then for these two, yep. I'm going to put a bit of olive oil. Yeah. So and then I'm going to put yeah a nice amount of spice on this. Right. So here's right. our spice. Yeah. Give it a really good corn. Look at that. Both sides. Lovely. Mmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, I can smell it. Chicken. Yeah. Both sides. Uh huh. You don't need to marinate this for too long. You know, the freshness is absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, we're not braising it, but if, you know, if an hour would be good, but you don't need to do it overnight. I don't see the point of that for this, but that there is enough. I put it on the prawns just before I cook them. Okay. Because prawns are so delicate, there's salt in there. That could start curing them prawns and make them tough. Uh -huh. I'll do that just while it's in the pan. Okay. Now look at that, that looks mm, amazing. It smells so good. Very nice. Right, I'm going to. Okay. Got my pan. I'm going to start cooking my steak. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to take the same time as the chicken. So as soon as this is preheated and it's ready, yeah. I'm going to. So you're cooking them all at the same time. I'm cooking them at the same time. Okay. No. Well, if somebody I... Elaine's asked what's the rub, but you've talked about that at the beginning. Yes, yeah. Elaine, the rub is the fajita spice recipe. So if you look at, um, you can watch this video again, by the way, anybody, and you can tag it and share a friend, and you can watch it afterwards as many times as you want. It's on my page, and it's on uh, Swan's page. Um, this is this spice. I'll just go through it again. It's a homemade fajita spice. It's got lots of beautiful spices in there. Mm -hmm. Right. I am preheated. I'm going to start to cook. Okay. So I'm going to watch, watch from here, door. just so everyone can no see. No problem. I'm going to get... So what are you doing first? I'm going to get my chicken on. Okay. You hear that? Yeah. I'm going to get my chicken on. And that's sitting happy days. Okay. So what setting have you got it on? It's, I've set it on the chicken setting. Chicken. There we go. Okay. And then we'll see what that's like. My steak is there, my pan is getting nice and hot here. Yep. And I'm going to put the steak in the pan. And then I've got another pan, and I'm going to do the prawns in that pan. They're going to sit and rest and be beautiful. Then yep. I'm going to quickly flash fry all them gorgeous vegetables and assemble everything. Yep. In the meantime, I've got a little hat which I'm going to show you in a second. Yep. I've just turned the oven on my lowest setting. You'll see why in a moment. Okay. 
Sarah's said, I need that grill. We are a family of eight. This would be amazing. Oh, well. Pop over the Swan. It's a Swan uh, contact grill. It's the absolute king of cheese toasties, but it does lots of other things. Um, we cook it on all the time. Excellent for grilling vegetables, fish, meat, everything. So get over the Swan, um, and I'm sure they'll uh, sort you out. I have pans good. Steak's going in there now. Okay. Just gonna Oh yeah. Yeah. That looks good. I'm going to set it down for two minutes. So what was in there? Is it just oil? Just oil. So you had oil in there and then added the yeah. steak. Yeah. That's just going to be beautiful look at that. I'm going to add a little touch of butter because I have to. I'm not sure that's a Mexican thing, but it's my thing. It's a chef thing. I'm going to add a nice amount of butter to it. Okay. Right. And spices are getting right up my nostrils. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful sensation. Mm. Just gonna have a little quick look at my chicken. Okay, let's have a look. look at that. Gorgeous. Wow. So you see how the grill's cooking it from both sides? Oh right, yeah. Top how long does it take? Top and bottom, cook? not long, couple of minutes. Brilliant. I'm just going to give a little bit of oil. Yeah. Just gonna turn it over. In fact the seal's almost ready. Yeah. Can you believe that? That was super quick. How quick that. Excellent. Right, there we go. Okay. Now you don't need to season that. Why do you not need to season that? Because we put salt in this mix. So you might need to season the bigger piece of steak, but the chicken when it's cooked finer like that, there's enough seasoning in there. Just check the steak. Check it's not catching or burning. You don't want it too hot. That's wonderful. I'll just leave that to rest there nicely. Oh, we got? We've got 40 seconds, that's good. And right, so let's start assembling our, our dishes. We've got a lovely platter here. I'm going to put some guacamole in one dish, like so. Oh, nice dishes. Wonderful, look at that. So, on my lovely platter here, I've got some cheese, I've got some sour cream, I've got some lime, I've got some lovely lettuce. Yeah. I've got a long tray for all my meat and fish. Look, see all that juice at the bottom? That's my oh, Bloody Mary yeah. juice. Yep. Yeah. So there's my salsa. So I think this would be a nice meal, you know, like a Saturday evening awesome. family, everyone around the table. This is your it? classic, quintessential Saturday night party night meal. Here we go. Right, I'm going to turn that steak over now. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Look at this lovely caramelization on that. So, why do you put the juice on top? Just to keep basting it. Okay. My chicken. Is ready. Can you believe that? Is it ready? That was super just quick. Put a little bit of that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them off. Just put them on there. Okay. And put a little gorgeous caramelization of them spices. Yep. Stick that off. Have a little look in that pan, Julie. Yep. It smells very, very good, that meat. good does that look? Yeah, really nice. Now, I'm giving two minutes each side because we like it nice and rare. If you want it not so rare, give it three minutes each side. If you want it well done, do four minutes each side. Okay. So that's just perfect for me. Yep. See that? Just juicing and sauces over. And then I'm going to go in with just a very small knob of butter. Okay. Make sure you don't use too much. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people watching that are feeling very hungry at the moment. <laughs> That's good. Well, we are having this straight away. My wife says she'll film on one condition that we can stop it as soon as we're done. <laughs> so we've also, we may, just to check its balance, have a cheeky day with it. Because why not? We did, after all, uh, Wednesday is the new Friday. Adrian says um, he's absolutely starving now. <laughs> Is that Adrian Finley? Yeah. Oh, awesome. He loves his food, that man. He can eat that boy. Thanks for watching, Adrian. There we go. Look at that. Check that out, right? Look at that. Them buttery juices yeah. going all over that. Yeah. It's almost like it sounds sauce. I'm going to put a tiny bit of extra salt because it's a big piece of meat. Okay. Yeah. And Julie's asking about the spice rub. Again, it is on the recipe. It's on the it? recipe, Julie. Don't worry. You'll have to watch this at the end. Um, and it's all on there. It's also under the discussions on the event. It's a fantastic spice mix. I urge you to stop by and find it to mix and make this one. The difference is astronomical. 
There we go. Look at that. I'm going to switch that oven off now. And then you'll see okay. it all in fly. Yep. Right, that's nearly ready. Okay. That feels perfect. That's perfect for me. That's lovely and rare. I'm going to switch that off. Yep. I'm also going to put some lime. Oh, okay. What does that, that do? That just brings a lovely bit of acidity to the butter and to the spice. Yep. Also, check that out. It's making... What's it making? A beautiful sauce. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yep. I'm going to sit that there. Okay. So that's resting now. Yeah. I'm going to now do my vegetables. They take... Well, not a long time, but they take a longer time than the prawns. The prawns take seconds, so I'm going to do the vegetables now. Okay. So, another pan. Another pan? Yep. Do you ever do them on the grill? You can do. I could have done them on here. Um, but I, I want them more like a stir fry. I want okay. it crispy and gorgeous. I'm going to get that whack that heat right up. Yep. That chicken feels amazing. Guacamole. Yep, we're all good. We are ready for our banquets, Julie. Yep. There's going to be no issues for being well fed today. There we go. You can hear that crackle. Hear it sizzling, yep. Get that roast and hot. Get some vegetables on there. Just oh, okay, that. so it's like a stir fry, yep. Yeah. Just throw them all in. And sometimes it's nice on a uh, barbecue grill or a contact grill to get some char marks on this. Yeah. And um, going to give a little bit more oil. Going to give it a little bit of salt. So I'm not going to do anything with it. Leave it alone. It's not nothing bad happening. It's caramelised on the bottom. It's get, retaining the heat. You hear that constant sound of frying. People are constantly messing around with things. They're taking all the heat out of the pan, lifting it off the heat, no good. Listen, constantly frying, perfect there. Yeah? yeah? So it's done because people keep yeah. stirring stuff, so, yeah. There's no point in stirring, all you're doing is like, what's the point? You're taking the heat out of the pan, you look like you're panicking, you need to stay cool, leave it alone. Right now, we look hot. Yeah. Back on the heat. Keep the heat wonderful. Okay. Just start to caramelise a little bit, which is what I want. Yeah. I don't want this to too brown, I don't want this too soft. I like crunch when we do this. We want textures, remember. It's really important. We just want them just to start to give a little bit. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go in now with some spice. Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we are spicing this up. Yeah, you see it? Yeah, looks good, yeah. Courtney from Newcastle says hello. Oh, hi Courtney. Said it smelled, it looks delicious. Wonderful. Look at that. Just give it a little turn again. Right, you see that now? That's wilting. Yeah. So that's literally seconds, wasn't it really? It's not taking long, is it? Like so. And then to help that wilt a little bit further, yep. all I'm going to do is just a little splash of water. Okay. Form some steam. Ready? Listen. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What's that doing? Crazy. That's just going to form some steam, evaporate, give it a little bit more intense heat for steam pot. And then I'm going to put that on my platter. For me, that's enough. Check. See how it's all softened up? Yeah. It's on the wheel. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Keep it vibrant. Get that veg on there. Yep. There's my chicken. Yep. Have a look at that, Julie. Mm. That is looking good. Right. And then my last thing is my prawns. Yep. So, a little bit of oil on there. These prawns take seconds. Yeah, I think people overcook prawns, don't they? they? Absolutely overcook prawns. Prawns will take no more than 45 seconds each side. That's it. They want to be slightly, slightly um, medium rare in the middle. They're very safe to eat that way. You can eat more shellfish, remember. Yep. So don't worry about that. Buy from a reptile supplier, buy good quality prawns, and they're wonderful. In fact, the Mexicans and the South Africans, they have ceviche all the time, which is basically raw prawns. Yep. Chopped up with some lime, some onion, some coriander, some chili. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Right, Neil and his husband says hello from Baxenden. Well, hi Neil, how are you? Thanks for joining you and your partner. There we go, just keep basting that gorgeous meat. That's just coming up to a great resting place. That's going over all of my chicken. It's going all over my vegetables. Yeah. If you're vegetarian, obviously you wouldn't do that, but you could do this with halloumi. And Ooh, that would yeah. be great, and you can still make the same juices by adding some butter and some spices. Right, yep. check that out. See how hot it is? Sizzling. Now what? I put the prawns in like a clock face. Yeah? Yeah, so it starts at 12 o'clock. Yeah, see that? Yeah. And I'll leave them alone. Yeah, once yeah. they're in, they're in. Okay. Give me that, give my hands a clean. Yeah. Uh, Diane's just joined and wants to know what kind of meat you've done. I've done chicken, I've done skirt steak and I'm doing prawns now. Don't worry, you can watch the video afterwards. It'll be on my page or on Swan's page so you can go through it as many times as you want. Right, check this out. First prawn, I've turned now. Yeah, look at that yeah. beautiful caramelization. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. They look great. Are these, is... Are these tiger pulls? Are these tiger pulls? Yeah, I've kind of so hot, I've switched off. Okay. Right? Yep. My butter's going in there. Small knob of butter. Ooh, yeah. Check that out. Yeah. Looking good. And then, I'm going to put a little bit of spice on the butter. Yeah. And as soon as that butter's melted, we're good. Yeah? Yeah. See that now? Excellent. So there's no heat good. on that pan. No heat now, switched off. It's just because residual, yeah. There's enough heat in there. And all I'm doing, check this out. All I'm doing, look, I'm just basting in them in the hot butter. Oh my gosh, that smells so spices. good. Spices. Yeah, look at that. Foaming butter. That is so intoxicating to look at, to smell, to taste. Yeah. Is amazing. that like the prawns they do in Spain at the tapas? Do they do them this way? Similar. Probably yeah. not as good as that, to be fair. Yeah. How many times have we had a paella and been disappointed? <laughs> yeah. Right, a little bit of lime in there. Look at that. Right. Let us assemble. Okay. Get rid of everything. There we go, make sure it looks beautiful. Mm. Right, so my little trick hack was lowest setting. Lowest, put yeah. Your bag of tortillas in the oven, still in the plastic. Oh, okay. Won't melt. You won't melt it at lowest settings. Don't take them out and cover them in tin foil and all these other things, and then you find the edges are too crispy. Um, you can microwave them as well. But in the lowest setting, they are now sitting perfect. They are nice totally hot. Yeah. They're sitting in my bag there. Mm -mm. Got my prawns this side. Let's yeah. have a look. Some beautiful shrimps this side. Mm, that looks a nice way to serve it, actually, doesn't right, it? You know what? It's quite a nice to do a few different meats and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Some of the prawn juice this side, then people know where it is. Okay. All the beautiful flavours. I've got my gorgeous steak. Yep. That's going in the middle. Okay. So you're chopping it, you're slicing. This steak, I mean, look at that. Mmm. Beautifully cooked, that. That is absolutely perfect. That is your real deal. Rested. Yeah. Nice and rare. Look at that. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. That goes there. Okay. Mmm, that looks such a nice platter. And remember, some of your gorgeous pieces. Over there. That's your meat juices, yeah. That's going to go down into your vegetables. Lovely. How's that look so far? Very, very nice. Right, very delicious. Clean. Okay. Looking at that. Yeah. Give it one little clean and then I'll cut my chicken. Yep. Very nice. So what's in the, uh, what's the white sauce? Is that a sour That's cream? That's just sour cream. Okay. Right. What are you doing first, chicken? Yes, my lovely tender cooked chicken. I think a lot of people sort of think everything's got to be boiling hot when no, they eat it, but it shouldn't, need should to be, it? Does it? Doesn't need to be at all. Keep looking at that. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. And then for me, 
A nice little finish is just a little bit of coriander. Give them a little rough chop. Like so. Mm, yeah, really good. And that is... Yep, that is a platter and a half. That is a platter to die for. Yep. So that is worthy of celebrating National Fajita Day, don't you think? Absolutely. Check it out on the video, keep watching. Do it shrimp, do it steak, do it chicken, do it veggie even, but I urge you to try to do it all. It's really good. And of course I have to try, as we do, it's part of the rules of Facebook Live. There we have, one fajita. So this is how I do it. I get lettuce and I leave it whole. Okay. What some people do is they cut the lettuce and shred it. But if you keep it whole, come around here and watch Julie. Mm -hmm. If you leave it whole, it acts as a place to hold your vegetables. Okay. I'm gonna have some nice rare steak right there. Yep. Some of these gorgeous vegetables. Like so. See how the lettuce is holding it like a boat? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. A little bit of uh, pico de gallo yeah. salsa. Some gorgeous avocado. No mess here. See, ha watch how easy this is yeah, going to be. Yeah, because they always fall apart. Exactly, don't they? but watch how easy this is going to be to uh, wrap up. Yeah. A little bit of sour cream. Excellent. And a little bit of cheese. A little bit of cheese. You could even Mexican styly with a few chips and then okay. bottom. Bottom. Fold. Yep. Yeah. Fold one way. Then wrap it. Yeah. And that's it nice and neat. Lovely. Not falling out. Bottom's holding it together. Mm-hmm. Like so. And now I'm going in for the plunge. Go for it. I'm very jealous. Wow. <laughs> Obviously good. Utterly speechless. Not because <laughs> my mouth's full of steak, but because it tastes so good. It's vibrant, it's delicious. It's so much more zingy than one of them packs of fajita meals. It totally blows that apart. Yeah, 40 minutes as well, start to finish. Urge this, and this is awesome. So thank you very much. Um, I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for National Burger Day and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye.